What's going on guys, it's your boy Big Hero Chris back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on TikTok, hit me up in the community post. You already know the vibes and it's Wednesday. You already know what that means. It's time for your AEW Dynamite review. And not only is it time for your AEW Dynamite review, it's time for celebration, man. Five years of AEW Dynamite. Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought we would have made it this far? Who would have thought we would have made it the five years of AEW Dynamite? Who would have thought that we would finally get the announcement of the AEW TV deal with Warner Brothers, deal with Max? Finally, man, I've been waiting for so long because the deal has always been imminent. We've been waiting for the deal. We've been waiting for the announcement for any day now. Those days turn into weeks. Those weeks turn into months. I was damn near scared that they were gonna turn into years, but the wait is over. The deal is done. So starting next year, AEW will be streaming on Max, and I think that includes pay-per-views and their weekly television shows, Dynamite and Collision. Like I said, I think last week, Kiss Rampage Goodbye, it's gone forget about it so that's pretty cool man it's a pretty cool deal it's a pretty cool time to be a wrestling fan and it, honestly it's really a good time to be a wrestling fan whether you like AEW, whether you like wwe whether you like me and you just like everything it's pretty cool now we go into the celebration the five-year anniversary of dynamite and it kicked off with the blackpool combat club they're doing a vignette they're looking all mean and scary and they're talking in riddles <laughs> and they he had uh, Pac and claudio calling out we on yuda saying like listen man wh wh what you been doing bro you know we, where you belong you belong with us you're not a cute cuddly teddy bear you're a monster just like us man and they're pretty much trying to strong arm this man into joining him to like really leaving Brian Danielson behind and just joining up with the Blackpool Combat Club. And then you have Moxley talking about his match with Danielson at Wrestle Dream. And he's pretty much saying that he 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 prayed that Brian Danielson didn't win the AEW championship. But since he did, here we are. And he's gonna put him out of his misery. He's gonna bury him. Like literally bury this man six feet deep. And I'm like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> these people are crazy these are some sick men with sick thoughts so so they're pretty much you know hyping up whatever it is that they have up their sleeves later in the show you see brian danielson talking about his match with um, john mosley at wrestle dream and on top of that the reason why he challenged okada to a championship match on dynamite and he pretty much said that he wants to be a fighting champion anytime any place um he said, fuck John Mosley. <laughs> and he really just explained why he um he challenged Okada. He did Brian Danielson wants to be a fighting champion. And that's all well and good. But we go to the main event. And the main event was Brian Danielson versus o um, Okada. And it was championship versus championship. The <laughs> And it was kind of convoluted, this whole premise of the whole championship versus championship thing. Because not only was the AEW championship on the line, but Okada's Continental Classic championship was on the line. And the way it was explained to me, under Continental Classic rules, the matches are only last for 20 minutes. Which is why for the first 20 minutes, it was from both championships but after 20 minutes it was just for the aw championship and i'm like can we just have them wrestle did the titles really need to be on the line you could have just said brian Daniels and really could straight up just say look man we're one and one i don't know how much more time i have left because i have john mosley coming up he may end me so i want to square this way with okada before i face off with john mosley could have been that simple titles didn't really need to be on the line especially since the championship match is happening in like two weeks or so so i have no problem with okada and danielson wrestling on free tv that's not my problem it was just the whole championship match thing and then the convoluted continental classic whatever so yeah but as far as the match goes to the surprise of nobody it was really good it's brian danielson and okada two of the best wrestlers in the world so Duh, they had a really good match. Brian Danielson ended up getting the win. You see Claudio and Pac outside the ring watching the match go down. <laughs> and then after the match, you see <laughs> Okada hit Brian Danielson with a Rainmaker. And he flicked everybody off and he bounced. 
And then that's when the Blackpool Combat Club come up, pull up. They're beating up Brian Danielson. John Moxley hits the ring. He's talking about how this is bigger than him. This is bigger than AEW. And it's, it sounds like it's on some higher power type shit. And I kind of see what they're going for. My prediction is that um, John Moxley beats Brian Danielson. And shame and man is going to be the one that helps brian john moxley he's going to reveal himself as the higher power and they can continue this whole takeover or whatever it is they have going on that's just my prediction for wrestle dream but as far as this episode of dynamite goes you see will yuda hit the scene he has a hammer in his hand and you don't know what he's going to do you don't know if he's going to beat up the bcc you don't know if he's going to turn heel and beat up brian danielson he actually joins forces with Brian Danielson. They're fighting off the Blackpool Combat Club. And it was announced that next week is going to be Yuta, Danielson taking on Pac and Claudio. And that leads to one more question. Um, Claudio, Pac, and Wheeler are the trio's champions. So what happens with that? Well, that's another story for another day. That's a bridge we'll cross once we get to it. But one thing i do want to talk about is will by god osprey versus ricochet and before this match took place man you saw ricochet you no know, you saw will osprey in the back he's talking to the don Callis family he's actually talking to him um, kyle fletcher and then don Callis pulls up and he's like hey kyle we gotta go man we, we have a fight to catch and kyle's like what and will osprey's looking at like, yo you're leaving before my match but what's the deal bro and then you see Takeshita looking at will osprey menacingly Ooh, what could that mean we'll see in a couple minutes but as far as the match between osprey and ricochet i know a lot of people are complaining oh what's the story they're slamming their fists and yelling at the top of their lungs about the worst of the story but it's like yo it's will osprey versus ricochet like, you really don't need much of a story outside of is what Ricochet versus Will Ospreay. Now, the debate goes, could this have been saved for a pay-per-view? Absolutely. I totally feel like this was a pay-per-view quality match. Wrestle Dream is a couple weeks away, but I understand why you would, you would have it on Dynamite, especially the five-year anniversary. I would have saved it for Wrestle Dream, but you know, it is what it is. We're here now. We got grabs going on. We got flips. We got the superhero pose that they do, the sequence. These two are like the Scorpion and Sub-Zero of pro wrestling. Like They're both doing flips off each other. They're hitting Oz Cutters and hitting Blades and flip de doos and hoo hoos and all types of shenanigans is going on. And the way this match initially ended was Will Ospreay hit Ricochet with a hidden blade. And the way they landed on each other, both of their shoulders were pinned to the mat. The referee counted both of them out and the match was declared a draw. And you had the crowd chanting bullshit. I was at home like, that can't be the way you end this match. Even Will Ospreay and Ricochet were like, nah, we got to keep the party going. We got to go. And uh, the, the referee restarted the match. And before the match could really restart, Takesha comes out and he attacks Will Ospreay. He attacks um, Ricochet. And he holds up the international championship. Now, me personally, I feel like this could possibly lead to a fatal four-way involving Kyle Fletcher for some reason because, you know, hey, get everyone involved. But I'm um, thinking it's going to be a triple threat match. I wouldn't mind seeing the fatal four-way, but if we do get a triple threat match between Takeshita, Osprey, and Ricochet, I ain't going to complain about it. I ain't going to be mad about it. Sign me up, bucko. So we got to get down to business. Hurt business, hurt syndicate. MVP, he's back, he's on the building. He's talking to Mercedes Monet. He hands her a business card, so that's something you gotta keep an eye on. And then later in the night, you see um, MVP talking, and he's saying he has a special announcement. But before he can get to the special announcement, Prince Nana pulls up and he's saying, Listen, man, I don't appreciate you talking spicy about me and swerve last week and mvp's like listen i don't care about nothing you just said that sounds like something you need to take up with the <laughs> complaint department and he points behind press nana and the manager of the complaint department is none other than shelton fucking benjamin we are getting one step closer to the hurt business being in the AEW. you already have mvp you already have shelton benjamin bobby lashley is not too far behind I'm thinking he pulls up next week. 
if not next week maybe at Russell Dream but Bobby Lashley is on the way early in the show you have the gun club aka the ass boys talking about um Juice Robinson's match against Hangman but before they can really get fired up Hangman beats up both of them with a steel chair and this leads us to the match between Hangman and Juice and they just start fighting before the match could even start the bell didn't even ring they're fighting all over the building they're fighting through the crowd um I, th I don't know where Juice Robinson got the strap from, but he just put a strap out of nowhere. I don't even want to know where it came from, but he starts whoop whooping Hangman with a strap. They finally make it back to the ring, and they wrestle, man. They have a pretty good match, and the whole time I'm thinking, Jay White's coming back. Jay White's coming back. When is Jay White coming back? I'm just ready to see Jay White, and I'm not even really paying attention to the match because I'm just ready for Jay White to come back. Hangman ended up getting the win because he hit Juice Robinson with a low blow and then after that he hit a buckshot lariat and then after the match he attacks him with a belt he hangs him again like he did this past Saturday on Collision and as this is happening my prayers are answered Jay White's music hits he comes out and he and Hangman just start fighting they're fighting all over the arena um, Jay White puts him through a table so you have King Switch back you have Hangman. I'm assuming this is going down at Wrestle Dream. So Wrestle Dream is pretty much unfolding before our very eyes. And I was getting kind of nervous because it's like a couple weeks away. And at the time we only had one match announced. And that was between Danielson and Moxley. So you can kind of see where um, Wrestle Dream is going. Unfortunately though, we have another match announced. And that match is going to be between <laughs> between Mark Briscoe and the learning tree, Chris Jericho. And I'm like, oh, brother. So Chris Jericho and the learning tree come out first. They're, Chris Jericho is putting over the fact that he single-handedly got AW the TV deal. He's yelling. He's waving. He's saying, hi, guys. Thanks, guys. And all that crap. And then Mark Briscoe comes out. And, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And what's gonna happen is at <laughs> at Wrestle Dream for the Ring of Honor Championship, it's gonna be Chris Jericho versus Mark Briscoe. Now I will say this: there was one particular part during this segment that kind of did pique my interest, and that was when Chris Jericho was talking with Mark Briscoe, and he said that at Wrestle Dream he's gonna go from being the Ocho to the Nueve, which is nine in Spanish. In case you people are not bilingual, <laughs> Chris Jericho says that. Mark Briscoe's out of his league, that Mark Briscoe can't beat him. Maybe his brother Jay Briscoe could have beat him, but not Mark. And Mark Briscoe knocks Chris Jericho on his ass and says, Don't you ever in your life bring up my brother ever again in your pathetic Canadian life, you fucking coward. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much the long and short of what he said. So yeah, man, I'm not looking forward to this. This is an unfortunate piece of business. That will most likely be my bathroom break. I will be getting drinks or whatever or getting food during the Chris Jericho match because I have no interest in seeing Chris Jericho wrestle in big 2024. Another thing I do not have an interest in is Britt Baker. <laughs> and unfortunately, Serena Deeb as well because Serena Deeb wrestled Britt Baker. And at first I was like, why is this match happening? But then I, it became very clear to me it's because this is happening in Pittsburgh. So, yeah, Britt Baker won with the lockjaw. After the match, um, Serena Deeb attacks Britt Baker. Queen Amanada pulls up and makes the save. And as all this is happening, you have Mariah May watching, and she's looking very impressed, like myself. Speaking of Mariah May, you have a backstage segment. Um, Willow and Nightingale pulls up and they just started fighting. So I'm kind of confused. I'm hoping this this leads to Willow versus Mariah May. But it's looking like it's going to be have some Britt Baker involvement. So yeah, that's something we got to keep an eye on, man. I don't know what's going down. I don't know what's happening, but yeah. Something else that's going down at Russell Dream, Darby Allen is issuing an open challenge. He was doing a back of vignette. And he was just talking and saying words about how he blew a shot at becoming AEW champion in his home state of Washington. How he screwed the pooch. And now who, in order to get on the card, he's issuing an open challenge. 
Who's gonna accept the challenge? I don't know, but yeah, way to go, Darby, you big dummy. Another match that's happening at Wrestle Dream is gonna be Jack Perry versus Shibata. I'm not mad at it. It's gonna be for the TNT Championship, and it should be a pretty fine match. Um, speaking of Jack Perry, speaking of the elites, you have Private Party. Oh my God, is that Private Party? They're coming out. They have on new ring gear. Unfortunately, they have a new theme. Rest in peace of their old theme shots. Probably one of my favorite AEW themes. They have a new theme now. It's okay. I like the old theme better. They wrestled with the Iron Savages and ended up winning. And then after the match, they call out the Young Bucks and they want those AEW Tag Team Championships. They actually want to wrestle them tonight on Dynamite. And the Young Bucks come out. And they say you want to, and they do that heel thing. You want to see us wrestle tonight? You want to see us wrestle the the, the private party for the AW Championships? Not gonna happen because it's in Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh sucks and it stinks out here. And then Jack Perry attacks private party. The young boys come in. They're joining in on the fun. Shibata comes out and they all fight. And then it's announced that this Friday on Rampage, it's gonna be a trios match. The elite taking on the private party and Shibata. So yeah. And I think it's going to be um, the Young Bucks taking on Private Party for the Tag Team Championships at Russell Dream. And me personally, I hope Private Party wins. They need this. They need this dub. They need this win. Hook wants revenge. Somebody beat up his daddy. He had to be taken to a local medical facility and then he went back to New York. I don't know exactly how that works. But yeah, somebody beat up Taz before the show in the NXT, I mean the AEW parking lot. So that is the reason why Nigel McGuinness was on commentary, which I was not mad about because we didn't get one single solitary Jones preference. So that was cool in my book, but Hook wants revenge, so it's not cool in his book. So yeah, but speaking of somebody that's cool in my book, we have the greatest father ever, the father of the year, Christian Cage. He's saying that his time is coming. He will soon be the AEW champion. He is the face of the network now and forever. And he's also taking credit for the AEW deal. So, you know, good for Christian. I believe him more than Chris Jericho. So, yeah, man. So, that was this week's episode of Dynamite. Next week is going to be interesting because Dynamite will not be taking place on Wednesday. I think because of baseball, it's going to be happening on Tuesday, which puts me in quite the predicament because NXT is on Tuesday. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to review both shows, watch both shows. Watching both shows won't be hard because NXT is going to start at 8. And, um, AW is actually going to start at 9. So I don't know. I don't even know how I'm going to do the review. I don't know. I'll figure something out. But yeah, man, with that being said, what do you think of this week's episode of Dynamite? five years of dynamite what do you think about this new tv deal let me know in the comment section below of course as always like comment and subscribe you guys take care peace i'm out peace